Hi gang, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. Today is Friday, March 18th, 2022. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Thumbs up my videos. There's been an earthquake swarm there on uh, the side of Mount Hood. So far, 20 in the last 24 hours. This is probably one of the largest earthquake swarms they've had there on Mount Hood. Here we have a live image from one of the ski resorts there on Mount Hood. I wonder if anybody there actually felt the earthquakes. I don't know if these are live or not. They're supposed to have live images here on this website. I'll give you a link to it. They have multiple views that you can watch. It's, this one here has got a little shaking going on. Uh, the camera stops and goes. This is at the bottom of the vista, it says. And this one here is the top of the vista. Supposed to be Mount Hood Meadows. It looks like the majority of these earthquakes that are happening today are along the Twin Lakes Fault System. Back in uh, 2021, last year, June, there was a magnitude 3.9. USGS later said it was part of the Twin Lakes Fault System. I have three monitors that I'm using. One from uh, Timber, Timber Lake. Another one they have labeled as Mount Hood. And the other monitor is Wamek, way over here, um, southeast of Mount Hood. So here we have Timberline, Oregon at the bottom. Wamek, Oregon here. Um, it's actually in the middle, but. And then Mount Hood Meadows at the top. And they're having drum beats actual drum beats of these earthquakes all right so here's the three monitors the one on the left is mount hood uh timber line and the other one whammock here on the right um when i went to the seismic station provided by pnsn whammock was actually the best one that shows up the earthquakes uh, this one here is Mount Hood Meadows. And then this one right here is Timberline. So Whammock and actually Timberline actually showed up the best. Without downloading the data, which I did do, it's really hard to see what kind of seismic signature, if it's harmonic, volcanic, or tectonic. So I downloaded them. These are definitely earthquakes. Mount Hood had the most marked in red. Those of you that might be new to our community might not know, but when they're marked in red, it means that the computer picked up an earthquake, sent a signal, or actually a text message probably, to the geologist, and they're supposed to come in and, and take a look at what was going on. The other sites, how they may have it set up, uh, could influence, does influence, how well the signature shows up. So let's take a look at this. Let's extract it. And it looks like we have both uh, tectonic, which means the plates are moving, and volcanic, which is similar to harmonic. But volcanic means that magma is on the move. So we got both influences going on here. This is what it was showing when I pulled the files. Let me make this larger. There are four types of earthquake signatures. This here is provided by USGS. The top one is tectonic. Now see it's got sharper points at the top. Volcanic. See how it's rounded? surface events, you know, landslides, rock slides, and harmonic tremors, up and down at a wavy motion. 
So, in my opinion, we have going on here both tectonic and shallow volcanic earthquakes, meaning the magma is rising up in the system. And we all know that along where plates collide, um, yeah, we got lava that comes up. Example, the ring of fire. That's why I say here, this is volcanic earthquakes. See how they're not really a sharp pop, but we do have one, a sharper top there, a little bit sharper there, but these other ones have rounded tops. So the majority of them are volcanic tremors. Here on this paper from USGS about earthquake swarms there at Mount Hood. Uh, this is about a swarm that they had in 2019. And it goes on to say that the swarms are caused not by magma coming into the system, but by the tectonic faults. It says, we infer that these earthquakes are occurring on tectonic faults and are not directly related to the volcanic process occurring beneath Mount Hood. Mount Hood has erupted episodically for about 500,000 years and hosted two major eruptive periods during the past 1,500 years. During both recent eruptive periods, growing, lo growing lava domes high on the southwest flank collapsed repeatedly to form pyroclastic flows and lahars that were distributed primarily to the south and west along the Sandy River and its tributaries. The last eruptive period began in A.D. 1781 and affected the White River as well as the Sandy River Valleys. So, the eruptions grew from the southwest flank, somewhere in this location where we got all the current earthquake swarms going on. Volcano type, a stratovolcano. Most recent eruption, 1865 A.D., the potential threat, they have it as very high. So, there's been 20 earthquakes so far today within the last 24 hours. Back in last year when they had the earthquake swarm in June, there was only seven. That was it, seven. Today, they got 20. The largest looks like being a magnitude 1.7 today. That's it right there. We have the miles. Uh, 3.1 miles below sea level. You'll remember, um, all earthquakes are measured from sea level. This one here, 3.2 miles, 3.4, 3 miles, all about the same depth. That one's a little deeper, 3.8. This one's a little shallower, a 2.5 miles in depth. Another 3.8. And let's go through them, 3.4. Like I said, this 1.7 was the largest. No one has reported feeling these earthquakes. See here on this map or this document, um, they're saying it's 5 kilometers in depth, where in fact it is 3.1 miles in depth. Here, here is the 1.7. Yeah, my doorbell's constantly ringing, and I apologize about that, but I'm in an apartment. Anyways. Um, I get a magnitude 1.76. Uh, let's take a look at the spectrogram right there. Yeah, see how, okay, I'll give you a good idea. Um, yeah, how deep it is. Yeah, the heat, the magma. Interesting. Yeah, look how high up it is. There's probably a fault, a crack, dike intrusion that is allowing this magma to come up. All right, 1405, another 1.7, 3 point mi uh, one miles below sea level. There's that earthquake, the spectrogram. Again, look how hot it is closer to the surface of the earth. And there's its signature, and I come up with a 1.77. So they're not fudging on these, at least those two that I found. At 1011 universal time, another 1.77 but that one I come up with is a 1.87 slightly larger I'll bring it down where you can see it there at the bottom 
for those of you that might be watching on a computer or maybe your TV. Let's look at the seismic signature. Yeah, again, see how it's higher up? Yeah, that's interesting. Notice over here how the flow of the magma changed. I want to pull that. Well, let's just take, yeah, that's the line of melt. Yeah, before that, see that? Nothing. And then it comes in. And let's go across to where it gets a little bit thicker. Yeah, you, oh man, yeah. Yeah, notice how the magma, how thick the magma is here. The pockets of melt compared to where it first started. First started there. And then, yeah, look at the difference. And then it settled down. Let me bring it over for you. It settled down right in there. See that? And this is what it was showing when I pulled the files. So I want to take a look at the seismic signature of where it changed from there. Let's just pull it from there and make that larger. Okay, I would say that's volcanic. I have to close this out. And we'll go to where it changed. And we'll make that bigger. Oh, didn't work. Yeah, yeah. So we got volcanic. And then it went into harmonic. See that? See the, the smaller waves? Let's pull this across and make it see that. So from volcanic to harmonic tremors. You know, they didn't even know about harmonic tremors uh, until Mount St. Helens eruption. And then they studied that. And uh, what, 57, 59 people died in that eruption. So we'll go back. Shallow volcanic earthquakes, harmonic earthquakes. And then tectonic. This article by USGS says, because you care, be aware and prepare. Not because we care, but you care. And it goes on to different things about the role for USGS and the role for the public. It says you can survive a volcanic eruption with great safety and less disruption if you learn about the hazards of hazards in their communities before an eruption and following the local recommendations to ensure households and businesses are prepared. USGS, uh, their job is to issue warnings of impending eruption, delivery eruption updates via the Volcano Hazard Program and Volcano Observatory website. There will be some warning before eruptions begin. But the time between the first signs and eruptive activity may be short. During the days, weeks, or months prior to a volcanism, the movement of rising magma gives detectable signals. Heightened gas emissions, which they are not taking right now because there's snow up there and they haven't gotten up there to put up the temporary equipment. And deformation of the video and unique earthquake signatures. Actually, social media is probably the best way we get the word out faster than any government agency. Unless it's an alert about an earthquake and you just have um, <laughs> probably just seconds for that. This is the only way to forewarn communities at risk in enough time to activate emergency response plans. Which will ultimately help save lives and property. Well, they don't have the gas monitors up there right now. Always be prepared for a disaster. Have a bug out kit, a plan where you're going to meet loved ones in case of lahars or volcanic eruptions or large earthquakes. So what are your thoughts? Please put those comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much for your support. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.